2.5 kV. That can't be right. That won't shock anything. I am over this. Oh! oh, oh. G'day folks, Jason from the Utter Farm here. Today I'm going to cover a big ticket item that a lot of us get wrong when it comes to earthing our electric fences or energizers. I'm going to cover how many earth stakes or rods do you need and how deep do you need to go. I'll start with the earth stakes or rods. Never ever use tubing, box sections or Rio bar. That'll just end up corroding off at the ground and fail within a couple of years, giving you poor earth to no earth. Also, when you select your earthing material, which is going to be either galvanized or copper, make sure you don't mix and match the material. If you use a copper earth rod, use a copper clamp. If you use galvanized earth stake or rod, use galvanized clamp. Otherwise, you're going to end up with galvanic corrosion. What galvanic corrosion is, two dissimilar metals in contact also have electrolyte. Electrolyte being moisture. One will preferentially corrode a right round with an electric charge. We already have the electric charge going through because it's an electric fence. You might be saying, well, I haven't got moisture. I'm out in the middle of the desert. You're still going to have moisture, whether it be rain, whether it be humidity, or whether it be fog whether it be the soil has got moisture in it you've got moisture so that's the electrolyte that's all it needs is to cause that galvanic corrosion and when it comes to your rods or your earth stakes i've heard multiple stories on distances apart three is a common number so i'm using three here but i've heard anywhere between or red between four foot to 10 foot apart. The majority say 10 foot apart, which is three meters. The perfect place to start when it comes to the depth of your earth rods or stakes is with the energizer you purchased. My JVA energizer here has got 1.4 stored joules and the output is one joule. The rule of thumb is you always should allow a minimum of three foot per joule output power of the energizer that sounds pretty simple doesn't it then how come a lot of us are still getting it wrong with all those figures and distances and depth i just quoted they're only ballpark figures at the end of the day it comes down to how conductive or the conductivity of the soil and that is totally dependent on your soil conditions or soil type whether you've got clay whether you've got soil or whether you've got sand. They all carry a different conductivity or got a different conductance through the soil. Sand drains the water away fast, so it's going to be very low in conductivity or conductance. I know my soil conditions here, um, a combination of topsoil or soil and clay, 50-50. So I know it's wet the majority of the time because the clay is probably a metre down. So it's holding that moisture. And I've got my stakes, like I mentioned, four foot or 1.2 meters in the ground. So it's going through into the clay. And then I've got that topsoil on top because I've constantly got my ground armored. Allows me to hold in the moisture retention and moisture longer. That way, giving me a better earth. At a minimum, you should have three earth stakes regardless. This is particularly important when you come to energizers with a higher joule to get the shocking power that you require on your animals. High joule units, 15 and above, the way you work out the amount of stakes you need there is you divide the stored dual energy by five. And that is the number of stakes you require always rounding up. And they all should be buried around that six foot in depth. The thing I've got to do is run, join these three earth stakes or rods together with wire. I'm just using high tensile wire for mine. The same wire I used on my electric fence. I'm going to keep mine high up as I can. That way, when the grass growth comes through, I can whip a snip underneath without getting entangled with the whipper snipper. And then from the last rod, I'm going from there down and joining onto this bottom earth wire at the bottom. When I put the insulator, sorry, when I put the energizer on, I'm gonna use the earth insulated cable provided 
straight onto the earth wire, the earth stake. What I've done here to start this end, I've just created a loop on this high tensile wire. That way I'm getting good contact with this earth. I haven't just got one wire going through it. I've got two points of contact along there. The more contact you've got, the better the earth you're gonna get. So it's just a matter of feeding it in, getting it lined up, putting it over the top of the post, tighten him up. Then just bend him over that 90 degrees. We'll head down and do the middle one. This second wire I always find the hardest. Tight, I find tightening up this clamp to get this first one, pull it tight first, holding it in position, taunt, nice and tight, tighten the nut up, then what you matter to do is shaping it on the outside. So you wanna go up, vertical, around this loop, so keep it tight. I can see that's gonna fit in there now, so now I place that undo it, place it in there, and then I can bend it down to 90 degrees to head off to my last stake. That's what I was talking about. I use this claw type clamp on my star pickets. This line, bring it down, thread it through the bottom here while that's all loose, hold it tight, tighten that nut up on the back side. When you've got it tight, you can easily make that bend in it now to the shape you required, and bring it up the top so you know it's going to come out of here. Undo it, Feed it in, tighten it up, and then make it a 90 degree bend to go that way. So that's what it looks like once you've loosened it off and put that loop inside under the claw clamp. It comes down through this claw, around this bottom middle claw, and then back up through and comes out the slot at the top. Now it's just a simple case of bending that down and running it there down to that last stake. There we have it, all three earth stakes wired up ready for use. I'll take you now and give you a close look. Oh, that's typical what I like to do. Have two points of contact, ground, through, back up. And as you can see, that's pretty torn. High tensile is pretty hard, pretty obviously high tensile being the name to start with. So it hasn't got much sag in it. It's, there's no issues of that sagging on the ground. This second one is probably the trickiest of all, but follow those steps, pretty easy to do. So I've come through here, pulled it through, tightened it up, bent it up outside the shape you require, loosened it off, put it through, and then bent that 90 degrees over. So that's the second, and the last point of contact is down here. Rinse and repeat, straight through, bring it up, put it down through, tighten it up, bend your loop on the outside, feed it through, go up. But with this one, I've obviously bent it this way to go to my ground stake. And with your ground stake, it's a good idea because all these ones here, the top five are hot wires, and that's an earth stake. I like to put a bit of poly pipe down there, so there's no reason why the cows should bump that, because it's gonna be hot. But if they did, it's not gonna earth out on your earthing wire, because you, yeah, that bit of poly pipe is in the road. And down the bottom here, all I use is just a split bolt to join my earth wire along to this ground wire, or earth wire at the bottom, so it's just a Simple split bolt, the same as I use all my jumper cables. The only thing left to do now is put on this energizer. It says on the box, it's been stored more than three months out of the sunlight, sit it in the sunlight before you use it. That way you're not going to wreck the battery and get it a full charge. But I don't think this one's been in the box for too long. It's sitting already sitting on 
volts and the battery symbol says it's full. But I've got a couple hours left here now in putting up the spring gate. I'll come back this afternoon and we'll have a look if we're going to hook it up. Finally ready to go live. This is a monumental occasion for us. It's been years in the making. By the time we put this timeless fencing up through the property and cut the gullies out, put the wiring and that through, it's taken a while. So we're finally ready to go live. Let's turn her on and see if I've got any shorts. Cross fingers we haven't. Here we As you can see, the energizer okay. Green light is illuminating flashing, so that's a good sign. As we can see, it's starting to settle in now. It's dropped down around that 7.7 .7 kilovolts. And it flashes over to 0.7 joules. You'll never ever get perfect conditions. You're always going to have contingency in place. You'll need to put in extra earth rods or stakes. You've got sandy conditions, rock, time of drought. You're not... When in doubt, add more grounding rods or stakes. That's going to give you a higher or an increase electron receptors in the ground, which means you're going to achieve the KV that you require to have the shocking power that you're looking for for your animals. Well, I had planned to do a service, but someone's appeared to have stolen the motor. It's good practice to test your fence in your most driest conditions, also in your wettest conditions. That way you can adjust your earthing accordingly. I hope you took something from that. I definitely learned a lot when I was going through that whole process. So have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening guys, wherever you watch this from, and we'll catch you later.